Okay, ladies and gentlemen, up next we have our next topic which is a buying opportunity emerge to be presented by Mr. Chan, Chan Gen Yu, Head of Research of Kanala Investment Bank. In 2009, Financial Times and Starmind ranked him the top three banking analysts in Pan Asia. During the same year, he was also awarded as the top 10 overall stock pickers in Asia as well. In 2008, he was ranked, he was ranked in the eight Starmind Industry Stock Pickers Awards for the financial industry in Malaysia. He was rated as the second best property analyst by DH Malaysia in year 2004. So here, let's put our hands together to welcome Mr. Chan Ken Yu. so that you can have a better idea uh, when you're actually doing your investment decision. Uh, okay, uh, very quickly, um, for the global economy, uh, based on our uh, analysis, we think that the global growth will still continue. Uh, in fact, I think uh, the, the growth in the US is actually uh, quite surprising. Uh, and uh, therefore, you can see um, even the Fed themselves also uh, start to raise the interest rate because they are pretty confident that the uh, US economy uh, it's going to grow uh, in the fastest pace. In the Malaysia side, I think uh, our growth was also quite surprising. Um, if you look at our GDP growth so far, um, definitely I think it's more than 5.5% uh, for the past three quarters. And for this year, uh, for the full year, we are estimating about 5.8%. It's quite a high growth uh, for the past uh, few years. And uh, even though uh, next year probably we will see a slightly slower growth, maybe about 5.1%, but still uh, it's quite a decent growth uh, from here. And uh, don't forget that I think uh, the uh, export segment, I think so far, uh, earlier, the, I think last year, uh, it, actually, it, it actually grew uh, with a quite a high uh, teens. In fact, I think uh, more than 20% kind of growth uh, for the longest time, I think at least also easily uh, for about a year time. So uh, it's naturally the growth will start to bring down, but still uh, the growth uh, level we're looking at will still comfortably uh, bring our uh, GDP to more than 5% uh, in, uh, in 2018. Um, this is the chart um, for the, uh, the, the growth in the uh, uh, semiconductor. You can see the shortest cycle normally is about, I think, uh, based on uh, uh, the uh, the cycle during 09 to 12, that was about 20 months kind of cycle, uh, and uh, the longest we saw about 26, and uh, so far we are only at 16. So meaning to say, shortest also we have another four more months to go, and the longest probably we will see another 10 more months to uh, uh, account of growth in the semiconductor uh, segment. Um, budget deficit, I think, uh, um, is as at uh, oil price uh, approaching the uh, 70 level. Uh, this is definitely not the main, main issue anymore. I think not main concern uh, 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 anymore because I think uh, uh, our uh, earlier on most of the uh, economies only forecast the oil price uh, at about 50 uh, US dollar a barrel. Now with this kind of uh, oil price, the oil revenue should and uh, therefore, uh, uh, we see no, uh, the, I would say, the, uh, no concern uh, in the government uh, um, uh, to achieve the uh, 218 
budget deficit about two point eight percent. Last year we 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 did about a three percent deficit, and that is actually meeting target. And uh, that uh, this year uh, we, with the oil price close to seventy. Uh, should have uh, much problem. Uh, that therefore, you can see uh, ringgit has a uh, strengthening, and of course, I think uh, the recent strengthening in ringgit also uh, was because of the uh, um, U.S. dollar as well. U.S. dollar, um, uh, despite uh, uh, Fed raising interest rate, uh, U.S. dollar actually uh, uh, depreciated against most of the major currency. Uh, we believe such a surprising uh, move probably is the unwinding of the carry trade. Uh, earlier on, uh, US dollar interest rate was low. Uh, people actually borrowed US dollar, and uh, actually they, they and uh, now with the interest rate of uh, US going to increase, now they have to reverse their position, and therefore uh, US dollar actually declined uh, uh, recently. For uh, ringgit, our year-end uh, projection is about three ninety, and I think maybe for the entire year probably range from about. Uh, Four to four ten there about, and now uh, with uh, uh, high. I mean, so long if the school oil prices can sustain or even go higher, uh, we believe uh, there is high tendency of uh, the ringgit to appreciate against dollar uh, from here. Okay, in terms of interest rate, um, probably because of the uh, uh, the stronger growth. And uh, also, I think the, the U.S. already, I think they, they raised few round interest rate. We probably have a chance to see a higher. Uh, uh, also, I think the interest rate hike this year. Um, I think consensus right now, uh, looking at about uh, one interest rate hike, uh, especially in the first quarter uh, of this year. This is a consensus. Uh, but I think that the, to us, probably the um, maximum. Uh, the, the OPR will increase if any also I think it shouldn't more than 50 basis point because uh, for us uh, the emphasis are still mainly on the growth not so much on the inflation we are not like uh, Indonesia Indonesia is an inflation targeting uh, uh, country and therefore they, uh, they, 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 they are interest rate chasing the in, uh, inflation very closely and even so I think recently uh, Indonesia also still maintain their interest rate so I think uh, we we probably will see uh, a higher chance uh, uh, for the uh, interest rate rates to, to contain below the 50 uh, uh, basis point. Okay, um, for the equity market, um, if you look at the uh, earning growth, uh, probably it's not so representative because uh, uh, if you check, uh, you check the consensus number also, I think that all the numbers are all everywhere because Last year, uh, we saw quite a major changes in the in, in index uh, component. Uh, we saw inclusion of uh, Nestle and uh, Press Metal. We saw exclusion of IJM and also uh, Westport. We also uh, uh, saw the uh, uh, the the merger of the Sun Labi as well. So from the original three com uh, three company become a two company inside the index. So the the numbers are all everywhere right now because. Um, because if you, if you understand how we uh, uh, calculate the earning growth is to be based on the weighting of the respective uh, constituent or the component stocks uh, in, in, in CI and uh, we actually take their various weighting and you, if you notice uh, even the methodology we calculate also will be different because uh, for instance like a press matter originally is zero weighting becomes something so you want to take the zero, you want to take the average for the full year, or you just want to take the year end number. Also, will yield different result. But um, uh, in the national, I think the, the, the growth number uh, is still pretty much in line with the GDP growth. Meaning to say, we're still seeing growth, but uh, probably the growth uh, will be slower compared with uh, 2017. Uh, um, the why the, the numbers. Uh, uh, slightly lower is because of the base uh, effect and also I think the normalization uh, in the banks and uh, maybe the power utilities, telcos, uh, their, their net profit uh, will normalize. So therefore we will see a slightly lower but uh, based on consensus, they are still looking at the quite high 8.2% uh, curve kind of this year. Although I think on our end, uh, our um, forecast is uh, it's a little bit more conservative. You only look at the flat uh, kind of growth uh, for for uh, for this year. But uh, as I said, I think that.
number all distorted by changes in the uh, uh, components. Um, even with our flat growth kind of uh, uh, earning estimate, we still uh, think that the CI can do at least also 1860. Uh, how we derive basically this based on our analysis input, the bottom up approach, and also even if you we, if we pack our um, uh, a PE of a 16.8 times to our estimate, we will get about one one eight five five the about so it's closer to one eight sixty. Now why once uh, sixteen point eight? That is because of the three year average. Uh, if you look at the index place of Bloomberg data, um, CI normally fluctuates within. 15 to about 19 times there about, so you take a, just take an average. Uh, just to highlight, I think uh, at 1860, that actually implied uh, market cap to GDP ratio about 9.4 times, uh, sorry, uh, 0 0.94 times, um, which is, I think, uh, very achievable. Uh, if you look at the historical numbers, um, the, uh, the ratio actually uh, normally they fluctuate within 0.9 to about one time, uh, and uh, sometimes they actually surpass at one time to about close to 1.1 1 .1, um, during the year of uh, election. So I think uh, 0.94 is achievable, and in fact, I think probably uh, we will have a, a high chance to see that ratio to increase uh, to closer to one time. Uh, okay, uh, for those who uh, have been uh, following us, I think uh, last quarter we will see uh, uh, things are getting better and we should see a better market, uh, especially in the fourth and the first quarter, uh, seasonally speaking. And uh, also I think uh, at that time also we mentioned uh, the uh, foreign flow because of the uh, stronger ringgit also uh, improved uh, significantly. And uh, valuation for CI um, is no longer uh, expensive compared with the regional. If you look at uh, uh, regional side. Um, normally, uh, CI uh, tend to trade at the premium against the regional. Um, at one point, it actually dropped slightly to a discount, and that was during the fourth quarter. And we think uh, that valuation was uh, uh, was at the lower end of the historical. And uh, very quickly, you can see the um, valuation for CI actually start catching up against the regional. Uh, so long the regional market continue to make new high, uh, uh, boosted by Dow Jones, and then we have uh, more rooms uh, to play a catch up uh, against the uh, uh, regional uh, indexes. Um, also, I think most important, the buying interest also have uh, turned. Now, um, how we measure uh, the buying interest? Basically, we using the daily changes for the index. We multiply by uh, the traded volume for the day and then we take an accumulation at any one point in time. So the, in a nutshell, what we want to see is if a buying interest is sustainable, you want to see the, uh, the, mul the, multi uh, the multiple product between the in uh, index changes and the volume, and you take a summation, uh, they will always uh, accumulate and become positive. It just has no more. So long the product are all positive all the way, then that indicate buying interest is there. And uh, we saw that. I think last year, early, I think the very end of uh, first quarter or near uh, the uh, first quarter, we saw that uh, happen and that was a, quite a strong uptrend if you recall and uh, only the reverse, I think uh, probably nearer to the third quarter. That was uh, last year and now we starting to see the trend emerging uh, and that, that was uh, during the uh, uh, second half of the December. Uh, not only CI, FBM 70 index, that is a big cap doing the same thing. See, quite similar, right? Same thing uh, across the board. FBM a must index. So all the buying just start uh, to increase, which, which is a very good trend uh, to me. That, that shows the market sentiment uh, is getting stronger. And, uh, but probably, um, the only pullback is probably is too strong. Uh, we have been uh, waiting for more meaningful corrections, but it didn't. Uh, it still uh, continue to be uh, elevated in terms of uh, uh, market sentiment. If you can see the market sentiment, um, uh, how we measure, basically we're just using the uh, forward PER for CI against the uh, uh, smaller index like uh, FBS 70 and also the small cap index. 
and that gap indicate how strong or the, how bullish the market can be. Uh, in a nutshell, is uh, so long the market is bullish, um, investors tend to go for mid and a smaller cap, and uh, therefore the valuation for mid and small cap will play a catch up. So the gap will get very narrow until the smaller uh, uh, cap indexes therefore be overtaking CI that, that uh, indicate the strength of the mid and small cap. But historically speaking, looks like they are at the uh, very top pitch line. So uh, how long it can last? Um, to be frank, we don't know. Uh, we, we are keep monitoring this situation. All you can say is the market sentiment is still good, but it's at the higher end of the historical range. That's all we can uh, make a conclusion. Um, the caveat um, so far probably is the access to liquidity in the banking system. Still not, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, so not up to the level that we want. If you can see, at one point the excess liquidity in the banking system more than 300 billion, and uh, now we are at the lower end. Despite the index, uh, actually the index actually make, uh, or approaching the previous high, but the excess liquidity is still at low end. This probably is the caveat uh, for for the market to to go uh, even higher from here. So uh, in 2018, what kind of opportunity and the threats that we can see? Uh, to be frank, I think this opportunity and threats we have to review every quarter. Uh, if I uh, tell you I have a 12 month kind of foresight, probably I uh, bluffing you all. Uh, now I think things are changing very fast, so we can only do a review every quarter. And uh, so far what we can see is uh, definitely it's a run up in commodity prices. Uh, that includes uh, your crude oil. Uh, but uh, excluding your CPO, that is unfortunately. Otherwise, probably you have another sector to look at. Uh, but of course, I think for CPO, um, there is also talks for uh, Lanina uh, effect. Uh, yes, I think the Lanina effect will be there, but uh, uh, it looks like it's a weaker one, so probably uh, harder to send the CPO price uh, uh, even higher from here. And uh, most of construction, and also of the plantation counters, they are trading at quite high PE at the moment. So probably we see uh, less opportunity uh, in the front. But I think for oil, uh, for commodity prices like uh, maybe steel, uh, that probably will give you uh, more trading opportunity. And off late, you can see the revival of the uh, some uh, oil and gas stocks. That also I think uh, is a sign already. Um, we will have uh, uh, related uh, stocks in our top uh, in our topics uh, this quarter, uh, steel and also the uh, and also the oil and gas counter. Uh, pre and post uh, GE play um, based on our analysis looks like there is no clear cut trend and uh, no conclusive uh, I would say the uh, uh, patterns that we can conclude uh, for the past few uh, GEs. Um, yeah, patterns are all different, so so it's quite hard to, to identify which stock can actually perform uh, 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 during the, the, the G or before the G. But of course, I think the uh, uh, the usual suspect uh, definitely is the construction counters lah. That is a usual suspect. Um, post G, probably I think uh, uh, maybe you can see more maybe. Um, like uh, maybe gaming counters, probably you can still look at it because normally post uh, GE, their luck factor tend to be better. Um, also, I think uh, water play. Also, I think this one of the uh, the team have uh, in invested mine uh, later post GE. Um, other than that, well, I think the World Cup probably probably is uh, not a major team for a market. Probably is for the football fans. Uh, but I think in general, they, they talk about F&B in the market. Then they talk about F&B, uh, brewery stocks uh, during the, uh, or before the World Cup. So probably you want to have a look, but I think so far what we can see uh, for brewery stocks, uh, probably the, um, the prospect is still pretty neutral, so we don't put, uh, we, 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 we didn't put any uh, uh, topics uh, from the uh, brewery sectors. But uh, F&B side, yes, I think maybe we can, uh, have some of the um, closer look, especially with the ring strengthening, your uh, procurement and purchasing cost should be lower. So we can actually have a have a look at uh, FMB um, banks. If uh, 
if you believe in the first quarter, we will see an interest rate high. Then short term wise, um, banks normally is a, a credit card winner because they will make a, a better margin uh, uh, upfront first before we talk about uh, the, uh, the threat is like uh, asset quality, your MF, RS9, you know, you, all those are the asset quality issues, but that will come later. But uh, when you have an interest rate hike, the first response normally uh, is the bank uh, uh, interest spread. And I think recently also, so some of the uh, smaller banks, like I think uh, uh, RSP, I think recently also you saw some uh, good run up. Um, I think even M Bank for that matter also is one of our topics. Uh, for for to capitalize on this trend, if uh, any. Um, other than that, um, probably the opportunity uh, we have to assess. Uh, 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 I think uh, over time also, I think maybe have to be very stock specific. Uh, that I think you have to really following uh, our report very closely. Um, this is not a proper uh, in general. So some. Uh, may I agree, uh, this year definitely may not be a smooth selling year, but I think uh, uh, still pocket opportunity will be there, but we have to be very selective. Um, for property developer, uh, that actually contracted with the interest rate hike. So if uh, you believe bank will be a beneficiary, then the maybe developer will be at the losing end. So uh, if no interest rate hike, then probably they are, they are doing better compared with banks. So, we have to uh, see whether the interest rate uh, high is there. Um, semiconductor, yes, at this time we already said uh, definitely we have uh, shortest four months and the longest ten months to to, uh, to go in terms of the, the sales number. Um, but uh, that also means that we are closer towards the uh, the till end. And uh, if you observe the valuation of most of the um, semiconductor stocks. Uh, they are also stretched to the higher end of their consensus uh, of their historical uh, band rating. Uh, I think they are more than one to one and a half uh, standard deviation above their historical trend. And how long this trend can last, uh, nobody knows. I think the same thing actually goes to the glove as well. Uh, recently, if you look at the run, all traded at uh, very high uh, uh, valuation in the sense. If you recall, I think we, we like these two sectors for the past few quarters. And uh, the time valuation was uh, at the slightly at the lower end, not so demanding. And but now things are different, so we want to uh, take a uh, uh, contrarian approach. We are slightly more conservative. We want to uh, uh, just go for those laggards, or maybe for those uh, players that valuation still maybe lagging behind their peers. Then maybe uh, that those are the stocks we we want to look at. Um, for instance, I think for semicon, I'll just give you some uh, idea how volatile the uh, valuation can be. Uh, good time, maybe a high-end player like uh, in Nari Group, Tronics, all those that can trade up to maybe 18, 19 times per year, no problem. Unisem, MPI, those are the uh, slightly uh, uh, lower end because they have the automotive segment. Uh, that probably can trade up to 15, 16 times. EMS player, also, I think maybe close to 15 times there, but, but when things turn bad, when they start doing a, a, a losses, that valuation will all disappear, they will become a, uh, they will trade according to price of book, and uh, it's way below book, and the lowest it can be 0.4 times book, and now they are all above book, and uh, some is even touching two times book, so you can see the volatility in uh, this kind of stock, so we have to be very, very, um, uh, alert, no? Uh, when we actually uh, 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 want to invest in this uh, segment, right? So far, uh, as I said, I think uh, we just downgraded uh, glove. Uh, also, I think we, we downgraded the, uh, the tech technology stocks. As I said, uh, we have been uh, very bullish about these two stocks uh, for the past few quarters, but finally, I think because of valuation, we decided to uh, uh, to play safe. We just downgraded it. Uh, but gaming, as I said, I think uh, after the, the share price correction of everything, so we think the value starting to emerge, so we just upgraded gaming counter. And the rest are all pretty neutral. Uh, aviation probably we is under review. 
because of the oil price has keep staying elevated, so we, we may actually uh, need to downgrade the sectors as well. And interest rate, if the height is stronger than expected, also I think in rate segment also we have to, uh, uh, I would say, the, the review the sector rating as well. And uh, the chances are uh, quite, uh, uh, I would say, quite high for, for downgrades. Power utility, I think, should be quite neutral, and uh, I think uh, uh, the power utility here we are mainly referring to Tanaga. I think Tanaga probably is still our all time favorite because of valuations. I think uh, even post election, probably is one of the teams you want to look at because so far, um, I think the, the foreign investors uh, probably they don't really understand uh, the way Tanaga uh, do their buildings because the, to them, is before GE, probably there's no tariff hike. And therefore, they think there's no catalyst in Tanaga. But to us, because Tanaga now is uh, using the ICPT, it means uh, it's a cost pass through mechanism. So, tariff high or not doesn't really matter because if the cost is high and uh, without tariff high, the cost will actually pass through government, government will give them compensation. And that's all. It's uh, just a difference in the cash flow, the timing in the cash flow only. Earning wise, there's no uh, impact uh, from the from the uh, from the end. So, to us, fundamentally, there are, there are not much of a major uh, difference. And now, if you notice, now just now we talk about CI, our target we put it close to 17 times, right? Uh, the Naga, I think, probably not even 14 times for CI stock, at less than 14 times, or I think uh, is uh, valuation is very attractive uh, to us. That's why we put it. As our topic for the for the past few quarters, I think recently also we, uh, I think year end we saw some run. Uh, but of course, I think maybe uh, you don't really like it because it's not definitely not penny stock. Okay. Um, in terms of timing, that's, that was written during the earlier quarters. I think the time we said anything uh, below one uh, seven one seven forty and below, there was a. Uh, good buying level. I think we saw that uh, and it actually happened. Uh, but now, uh, at this level, probably is closer towards our um, our our higher end uh, or closer to our target price. So, what should we do? Uh, should we still stick with the, uh, this strategy? If yes, uh, will we see a retracement below 160? Probably it's not. I think, uh, as I said, I think we saw the buy interest actually starting to, to emerge and that seems quite strong. Probably the retracement maybe even down to 1008 also is considered a, a, a good level to look at. So probably for for this level you want to downplay it because I think in 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 this quarter, I think in, in the first quarter, um, probably uh, um, I, I, I see less a chance just purely based on technicals. Uh, and uh, but I think uh, that uh, may happen in the second quarter. Who knows? But uh, for first quarter, at least uh, I wouldn't see any uh, high probability. I think uh, at best probably retracement probably is about thousand meter. But um, basically, how we actually come up with that level uh, was using this technique. Basically, we just using the. Uh, uh, the difference between the CI uh, level and also the consensus. Whenever that gap or the premium or discount closer to the lower end, normally it's about buy and uh, you know, and actually approach a higher end, normally it's a sell and uh, we actually approaching that. So at this level, if you follow this model strictly, it should be a it should be a sell. Uh, it should be wait for a correction before uh, we we go in more aggressively. Okay, uh, that is uh, what we actually in our mind, and uh, because of that, and uh, this is how we come up with our topics. Uh, as I said, I think uh, because of the uh, uh, stronger ringgit, we do mind to look at some uh, consumer counter again. I think MV uh, was picked because of the uh, the high uh, uh, cost. I mean, US dollar cost content, and uh, with the stronger ringgit, I think that should actually reverse the uh, declining trend in the earnings. 
But of course, I think uh, some may argue, you know, uh, MA is still trading at close to maybe 20 times PE, probably they are not so keen. Uh, high O, on the other hand, uh, maybe it's close to 60 times. Then I think I, I will agree on uh, that argument. If it's just purely based on uh, uh, B uh, multiple valuation, you should go for uh, high O, uh, in the sense both are actually uh, MLM players. But if you want to um, take a back, on their earning uh, 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 so-called rebound because of the uh, potential lower cost, then probably you can have a look. Because historically, MV is trading at the higher PE. There is no doubt about it. So now they are trading below their average uh, uh, PE. Uh, Anju, as I said, is a um, proxy uh, to uh, capitalize on the strong uh, commodity trend, I think especially the steel. I think fourth quarter, if you look at the numbers, uh, the steel prices still uh, um, considered at a higher uh, level, I think about 2007 about the time. So that should actually translate into good numbers for, for Anju. And I think you look at the PE, still below 10 times, uh, so probably you want to have a look. Uh, I think the commodity players, uh, uh, I think like a press metal also, I think now in the index also closer to about 18, 19 times. Of course, uh, these are the two different uh, um, uh, kind of uh, companies and they have the different kind of uh, dynamic in the business. But uh, of course, I think uh, um, closer to 10 times or below the uh, small cap average kind of PE, probably you can consider. FNN, uh, as uh, we promised, I think uh, we are looking at some of the uh, FNB stock. But uh, again, uh, may not actually uh, uh, see the attractive in the C26 bracket. Uh, yeah, but uh, if you look at uh, Nestle, once the inside index 100 ringgit traded at 30 all time, I think they are only traded at 20 times, 20 all time, they are about 20 times. So it's a big gap between the, uh, um, the Nestle and the F uh, FNN. So probably you want to have a look, but uh, yes, I think uh, we have to agree probably it's, uh, um, the, it's more on the, uh, the, 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 the cost. Uh, uh, and also, I think the the, the valuation uh, difference only. Uh, Mitra maybe is more interesting for you. Uh, if you follow Mitra closely, I think for the past uh, six months or so, uh, um, you will see their share price keep declining. Uh, what happened was, I think Mitra um, last year, the the I think uh, first second quarter, if I'm not mistaken, they have a cost overrun issue. And therefore, they actually impact their, in their, uh, their, their earning. Um, all the while, I think they, 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 they're doing pretty well in the rapid project uh, uh, there. Uh, just when they took up this uh, project, and that project, apparently, because in the rapid, rapid side, they are, they are all cattle for the uh, oil and gas uh, downstream uh, play, uh, player, I mean, the petrochemical side. And uh, that actually requires extra safety. Uh, uh, measures and therefore they actually um, they have to fork out uh, higher uh, cost for it so that's why the earning actually uh, affected and also I think they did the right issue uh, which actually surprised uh, uh, the investors because we thought that uh, they, sh they would not need any funding uh, for it why the right issue and that's, that's why um, the, uh, uh, the share price uh, keeps declining uh, and I think the right issue have yet to uh, go X. I think if you go into it, also you have to prepare uh, to pick up the uh, the right as well. Otherwise, you will uh, get diluted. So um, that's what investors don't really want to see. But uh, after we um, take the right uh, issue into consideration, we book up the numbers. It looks like their PE is still pretty low. Still trade at uh, I think less than eight times kind of PE. Uh, if you look at most of construction counters now, even a smaller cap, uh, probably they trade from 8 to 13 times PE, the above. that's for small cap construction. Bigger cap can actually 15 up to 18 times the above. So they are actually at the very lower end uh, of the, uh, uh, the valuation range. So we think probably something you want to look and then the, when we talk to them why you want to do a, a right issue, you know, then only come to our 
uh, uh, knowledge is that because uh, they need to maintain certain uh, gain ratio. Now the gain ratio is okay. Uh, I think about 0 0.8 times. Uh, with the right issue, probably we reduce one to maybe 0.7. But uh, they want to uh, keep it below 0.5 times. Uh, why? Because uh, one of the major client actually is uh, 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 Benigara. I think uh, uh, with the strict uh, requirement, they want most of their uh, uh, so-called vendor having a very low um, gearing and uh, 0.5 is uh, one of the level they are looking at so that's why they have to keep it uh, very low so that they can actually tender for uh, uh, the, uh, the the future jobs uh, from uh, from Manigara. and so far their order book is about close to 2 billion for this kind of company 2 billion is considered very huge uh, for their size so uh, we think uh, that two billion can easily sustain them for the next two to three years, and uh, with uh, uh, Benagara recently bought a piece of land, as you know, I think that there was an announcement. So probably they have a uh, uh, higher chance uh, uh, to secure uh, if they can maintain their gearing at the low level. So the future job prospect uh, is still there. So it's, to us, it uh, uh, seems uh, probably is the right time to revisit Mitra again. Okay. Uh, the next one is a part PIE. Um, PIE basically to us, uh, if you like the semicon segment, if you like the EMS uh, space, you like the players like maybe SKP, uh, VS, those, I think their PE is no longer cheap. They are trading at uh, about maybe 18 times the above. Uh, but I think for Pi, probably the, as you know, as you can see, it's not more than uh, uh, 15 times. So uh, it's one of the leg up. And uh, if you compare with the margin, probably they should trade at a higher PE compared with the, the peers because they are, uh, the peers are actually doing about maybe 5 to 6% net margin. They are doing about close to 8% because uh, they have a very strong parentage and benefit from uh, uh, Foxconn, uh, Hong Hai side. I think they, are, they have a, a so called a global procurement uh, uh, assistant from the parent company that can actually uh, give them a better cost and also I think the support uh, from the machine and auto. So that's why their margin uh, uh, is actually better compared with the peers. So this stock uh, also I think is a part of cash rich company. So something to look at, um, especially I think uh, it is a lagger at the moment. Um, so about dynamic, uh, uh, that is a proxy for oil and gas. Uh, but I think uh, before I talk about oil and gas, probably why I have to explain why we actually take uh, uh, Sabah compared with other oil and gas stocks because um, to us, uh, the sustainability of oil price uh, is, uh, I would say, um, probably I think uh, we, we, we still are concerned about sustainability of the oil price, put it this way, uh, because the oil price uh, uh, can be, uh, I think, uh, uh, high oil price can be actually uh, one, driven by the big dollar. Secondly, uh, the high expectations uh, for the Aramco listing uh, in the Arab Saudi and uh, therefore actually elevated the oil price. And uh, thirdly, uh, the uh, exceptionally cold winter from the US. And uh, that actually, uh, all these factors actually make oil price uh, stay elevated. But uh, what if come this year, uh, early this year, whether the oil price can sustain and nobody knows. And uh, therefore, we take a slightly different approach. We said, no, if we want to go into uh, oil and gas segment, probably I want to go into something is more secure. And uh, we decided to look into the rapid uh, project because rapid project by right should start commencement in 2019. And uh, 2018 is supposed to see a final link of uh, uh, fabrications or any uh, contract awards during this year. And this, that's why we want to look at those players in the rapid who may actually uh, benefit uh, from uh, uh, this year contract flow. And I think last quarter we have dialogue, and uh, this quarter uh, we have the server. Uh, that is how we uh, rationalize uh, our stock picking. So the dialogue has been doing very well. Uh, I think it's portraying our target price and the server also, I think, so far have been uh, doing pretty well as well. And uh, uh, the only only concern uh, for us probably is the, the, the future 
uh, development because I think they 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 actually considering probably they, they want to have their own development, which we kind of uh, uh, having some concern because having a development project in uh, rapid probably uh, it will change their risk uh, profile. So, but until then, because that plan have yet to finalize, but at least for for now, uh, we we will see. Uh, quite a good chance for them to uh, clinch a uh, uh, contract. Uh, another oil and gas player is actually Wasong. Uh, that is not so much on the direct oil and gas, but it's more on the piping. But I think so far they managed to get uh, quite a good contract. And I think uh, for the past few years, you saw the share price has been uh, uh, declining. And only I think uh, second half of last year, there's nothing to show improvement in earning and also the contract flow. And that flow, I think, uh, probably will still. Uh, um, I mean that, that contract of work will actually keep their earnings uh, remain strong for the next one or two years. And if you look at the PE, they are PE, they are trading at uh, maybe the low single digit or even I think for forward is less than ten times. So for oil and gas stocks, this kind of uh, uh, earning visibility uh, is not a lot. Uh, now most of the oil and gas uh, uh, stocks uh, actually up because of the expectation, not so much on the earnings. So if you want something that is uh, more, I uh, would say, the, uh, uh, visible in terms of earnings, then probably this is one stock you want to look at. Uh, top growth, as I said, I think uh, we, we like them, but I think the share price has been uh, uh, doing too well. Uh, probably it's near to our target price. In fact, I think probably surpass our target price, so probably no point to talk about top growth. Uh, Takafu, uh, recently, we, we saw some share overhang because the, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the new uh, SL requirement for the holding company, that's why BIMB holding need to partner some stake in the Takafu, and therefore they, are, they have some share overhang there. But to us, I think uh, Takafu is a good company, they are doing quite of a decent margin. In fact, the ROE are, are quite uh, uh, attractive at more than twenty percent. So to us, we don't mind to, to keep it as one of our uh, core holdings. Uh, WCT, why we be as topic? Uh, uh, that is mainly because I think if you look at uh, last year, the, at one point the share price surpassed above the two ringgit level uh, with the market talks. Uh, the time, you know, that's uh, uh, that's one name, uh, no, uh, 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 a major stake for previous owner. So that actually uh, uh, make market wonders probably they have a lot of uh, potential M and A, merger, all those stuff, and the uh, share price subsequently actually surpassed up to the two ringgit. And thereafter, you know, when the uh, news subsided and uh, people just you know, get maybe uh, 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 I would say the disappointed, and therefore the price start to correct, and uh, the correction is about close to I think uh, uh, quite of a substantial correction. So uh, why we pick WCD in, in this sense is uh, to us it's very simple. If you like the stock, because the, the new management and without knowing that their plan, you you already rush in and push a share price up to maybe two, and now the management already in place, they already let you know what they want to do, and the plans are there, and. There's no, no, I would say that you shouldn't actually uh, uh, sell them anymore. You should actually buy them. If you like it at 2, you should like it at 150, right? It cannot be, if you like it at 2, you hit it at 150, then a bit, a bit hard to explain. So to us, it's very simple. Uh, new management, they're actually able to com uh, convince us in terms of their new uh, plans, all this stuff, and uh, we actually see uh, them starting to uh, uh, execute their plan. Uh, to us, this is a good news and uh, this is a good move and uh, therefore with the uh, share price correction like this and uh, being a bigger cap kind of construction counter, uh, we don't mind uh, to have a look and uh, don't forget because they have, uh, uh, the, I think they, they have written down their, their Sudan, uh, the, some, I think there's a provision for Sudan that written down to zero. If let's say the dispute um, uh, is in their favor, then they can actually start right back. That would be the bonus to us. But uh, just uh, uh, operation by itself, you look at the, the whole modern group, the kind of development plan they have, you uh, are quite sure that they can actually, even internally, they can actually uh, clinch uh, such a good contract uh, apart from the third party. So that is uh, um, the reason we, we, we put down. Uh, M-Bank, as I said, I think is a, 
uh, just to uh, act as a proxy if you think that the interest rate is going to increase. So probably you want to look at bank for the initial stage. Um, but I think uh, uh, the, the peak of M bank is also a bit more tactical. Uh, for those who follow banks, anybody know what is the market cap for M bank right now? Anyone? Market cap for M bank traded at? Um, they are doing about 1.6 billion net profit. Anyone want to have a guess? What is the market cap? Oh, no one. Okay, no. okay. It's about 13 billion. 13 billion uh, for 1.6 billion net profit. Uh, that's not the end. What is your favorite Hapa Lega market cap right now? Anyone? Hapa Lega, about 400 million kind of net profit base. The market cap is 1.5 billion. A manufacturing, 400 million, 1.5, 1.6 billion bank net profit, 13 B. So, no, I think to us, probably, for those who meet, uh, who who actually you borrow money from this kind of market cap for those <laughs> have only I mean the lending money have a bigger market cap. I think that is something very wrong with the valuation. Probably something to look at. Uh, that is from more from a tactical uh, point of view. Okay. Uh, with that, I will conclude my presentation. And uh, any questions for floor? Um, most welcome. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. We shall move on to the Q&A session. Due to time constraint, we only take two questions from the floor. Uh, anyone? This, this gentleman. Hello. Um, recently, the EU, the European Union, has banned the use of uh, palm oil and its derivative. Could you please enlighten uh, us what was the short-term and long-term impact on the plantation sector and uh, CPO. Thank you. Okay, the long-term, the question, to, I mean, the, the answer to long-term prevent, actually no one knows. That actually depends on the oil price, to be very frank. Uh, if long-term the oil price stay low, there's going to impact at all. Uh, and as to short-term, also I can tell you, no much impact because they don't actually use our biodiesel anyway. They have their own biodiesel. They are, they are using different feedstock, so they won't actually use palm oil. So the bank, with or without, to us, make no difference. Yeah, one last question for Mr. Chan. Anyone? Uh, gentle, this gentleman in front. Why do you select M Bank versus RHP? Because the price is near fifty six yeah. cents a bank. So both also is uh, uh, both also are uh, rated as outperformed to us. No difference. Uh, the only difference is is here. If you want to look at the con constituent changes in their index rating, the first one is actually M Bank from two thousand thirteen two point four five percent drop until one point five eight percent in two thousand seventeen. If you look at RHB, they only they have recently increased. As you can see, the green color. Green color means uh, RHB is here. See, at least they see improvement in their weighting. So our view is because we are contrarian. So you want to make sure you are at the lower end so that you can capture the rebound. And uh, M Bank looks like it's all declined. So to us, probably. This is not reasonable. So, topic, I put uh, M Bank relatively compared with RHP, but both also considered as a uh, outperform call. We like both. Of